we got a question on the YouTube asking what my advice would be. How would I take somebody who's got a 285 watt FTP now and what would I do to bump them up to 350 watts, which is a massive, but totally possible if you're willing to do what it takes, increase in your FTP. And the first thing I'd say is that we don't want to be so concerned with the raw number of 350 watts itself because you could be heavier than you are now, a slower cyclist, and find it easier to push 350 watts, which is not what we want. So we want to be thinking more about watts per kilo. We want to be getting you probably like 350 watts is going to buy you maybe like five watts per kilo, which is going to put you in like the top 5% of cyclists in the world. We want to strip you down, retain lean muscle, increase the efficiency of your engine and increase your blood volume at the same time. I'm here with Gustav Ditters. Look like you're carrying a few extra pounds. This is what happens when you train super hard on the bicycle. Eat plants, lose weight, save your health. It's gonna be a bestseller. So the first thing is the kind of training that you need to be doing. We wanna be adapting your body to make what it takes to push 350 watts feel normal. And I realized this after watching Bradley Wiggins do his hour record. You could tell that he was just going through the motions at that event, at that ceremony. It was exactly that, just a ceremony because you could tell that hundreds of times before that, he had pushed 440 watts for an hour. He knew exactly what it took to be able to do that. His body has adapted to, to make what it takes to push 440 watts feel normal. And, uh, and that ceremony was just so that the officials could tick the box and say that he'd done it. There was nothing special about that day in particular. And because limits are all relative when it comes from one person to another, what, what Bradley Wiggins has done to make 440 watts feel normal, you can do exactly the same with what it takes to make 350 watts feel normal. And the way that you do that practically is with intensity, injecting some kind of intensity into most every single ride that you go out on. So you go out now and push 285 watts uh, and that's your limit. You go and, you go and do that for, for some intervals or you try and push 285 watts for as long as you possibly can, approaching 20 minutes. And the more that you do that, the more that you're gonna find that normal. And then when you do find that normal, when you find that easy, you're, you're then gonna do those same intervals as something like 300 watts and that's your new limit. And then you're gonna do that at 315 watts and then that's your new limit. You're basically gonna create these, these achievable stepping stones of this incremental wattage increase until you reach 350 watts. And, that, and with, these, with this incremental increase, you're, you're gonna be able to, with time, find 350 watts normal because you're gonna have done the work that means you've adapted your body to, to do what it takes to make that feel normal. I've said normal a lot there, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying. When you're pushing at your limit, what you're doing is adapting your body to do what it takes to push that limit even further. So the next thing is diet and lifestyle. Diet and lifestyle is just as important as the kind of training that you're going to be doing because they work hand in hand. One plays off each other. If you aren't, if your diet and lifestyle isn't in line with your five watt per kilo goal, you're never going to be able to train with the intensity that you need to be able to adapt your body, to be able to increase your blood volume and increase the efficiency of your engine to be able to push that kind of wattage. We don't want to be doing anything that is increasing your weight and we don't want to be doing anything that's going to be burning your body any more than the exercise already will be. We want to be increasing basically the amount of fruit and vegetables that you're getting in your diet. You want to be shoving as many leafy green vegetables into your day as possible because that is going to allow you to it's going to allow your body to recover in the fastest possible time because it's going to be giving giving your body all the vitamins and minerals that it needs to be able to repair the damage and because fruits and vegetables contain everything that your body needs in exactly the right kind of quantities you don't need to be adding any more cholesterol any more overt fat any more overt protein into your diet than than fruits and vegetables already have as the, as they come because you, bananas contain fat rice even contains fat you don't need to be adding anything else to your diet that than, than the fruits and vegetables already give you. And so when you increase the amount of fruits and vegetables that you're consuming in your diet in as whole a form as possible, you're gonna see a corresponding increase in your recovery time and the amount of wattage. How easy you're gonna find your what it is to push the, the, the limit of your wattage. With things like leafy green vegetables, the amount of nitrates that they contain, the more nitrates you get, the easier it's gonna be for your body to transport the oxygen in your blood to your muscles. And as we know, as I've said before, wattage is blood volume. Increasing the efficiency that you can get oxygen and the amount of oxygen that you can get to your muscles is gonna make it easier for you to be able to push wattage. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be in less pain and be able to push more wattage the more leafy green vegetables you consistently, day after day, get into your diet. It's just gonna take, you know, the thing is, most people would rather die than change anything about their diet and lifestyle. So just for a few watts as an increase in your FTP, most people aren't gonna bother with this, this advice and do what it takes. But you know, Bradley Wiggins was willing to do whatever it took to be able to make 440 watts feel normal. So it just comes down to whether you're willing to do what it takes with your training and your diet and lifestyle, whether you're willing to inject intensity every time you go out and ride. 
and uh, and whether you're willing to you know make leafy green vegetables a habit <laughs> if you're willing because the thing is the more you make fruit and vegetables the more the more you increase the amount of fruits and vegetables you have in your diet the more you're going to crave that kind of food the more you take out the food that is going to be burdening your body the, the less you're going to be craving that kind of food and the more you're going to be craving the things that are going to be increasing your blood volume and increasing the efficiency of your engine. Your ratio of watts per kilo, your, your watts here and your weight here, weight's going to go down, watts is going to go up. That's exactly what we want. And that's exactly what training with intensity and eating, e increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables that you have in your diet is going to do.